In this multi-sim and MyDAC demonstration, we will compare the simulated and physical digital multimeter measurements. Let's begin by entering and simulating a resistor and LED circuit in multi-sim. I'll begin with a fresh design. You can get these virtual components toolbar visible this way. So if it's not already visible, as it might look here, simply right click and choose virtual. You can also adjust the zoom level. You can do that a couple different ways. You can either use the icons here or you can use the scroll wheel as I'm doing right now. I'll begin by placing two resistors. I need a 1K resistor for R1 and a 2.2K resistor for R2. Press Control R to rotate the element before placing it. Then double click on the component and enter in the new value of 2.2K. I need a 15 volt DC source. Again, double click and change that value to 15. Every circuit needs an, uh, a ground someplace. I'll go ahead and place that on the bottom. Ground defines zero volts. All you need to do then is simply click on a component lead and connect the wiring as I'm showing here. I also need a light emitting diode or LED. Notice that the diode symbol does not have the LED that we need. When you know the name of a component, or even if you don't, you can still search this way. Begin by hitting select all groups and select all families. And up here, you can simply start typing. And in this case, I can then find the component which is named LED underscore red. I'll complete the wiring this way. Now my circuit is done. Next I can add the multimeter instrument. Actually before I do that let me first come up with just slightly different names here. I'll call that vSource. And I will also put some graphics on here. Text graphics in this case. So I can be clear about what I'm trying to measure. I'll call the voltage across R1 V1 with the polarity that I've indicated. And similarly, I want to find the voltage across R2. I'll call that V2, again, with the polarity that I'm indicating here. All right, now I can go place a multimeter device. You double click on that to open its front panel and it defaults to volts DC. Connect positive to whatever you call your positive voltage side and negative to the negative side. And the multimeter tells us that we do in fact have 15 volts across this source. Now I selected it and did a control C and a control V or copy paste operation. So I'm placing another meter to measure V1. Double click. Let's try that again. Double click that and now we've got a second front panel. And it tells us this new voltage is 13.2 volts. Let's do a copy and paste one more time to get a voltmeter established for V2. And we need this on the negative side of V2. All right, I'll then go ahead and simulate the circuit up here. And we see 1.8 volts for V2. So 
Now I'd like to point out that the orientation of the diode does make a difference. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'll delete the wires and I'll go ahead and then rotate this around. So I select it and hit Control R two times. Let me reestablish the circuit connections. And you'll notice now that the voltages throughout, that is a V1 and V2, are completely different. And we also see that the LED is now off. So the orientation of the LED in your circuit makes a huge difference. Basically current only flows in one direction through the LED. Now the last measurement I want to make is based on current. So I'm removing the meters and also reorienting the LED back to its original position. And here I select the ammeter mode, still in DC. Now I want to measure the current that's flowing from top to bottom through this LED device. I need to cause the current to flow through the meter. So I always need to modify the circuit to insert the ammeter. So current enters the positive terminal and flows out the negative terminal back to the circuit. Forcing current or causing the current to pass through the meter in this direction will cause the meter to read positive when the current is entering the positive terminal. Looks like 12.38 uh, milliamps. And that's showing when the LED is on. If I quickly flip the orientation of the LED, try the same measurement. We see now that we have zero for the current and the LED is off. All right, now let's build this resistor LED circuit and take some measurements in MIDAC. You'll need the following parts. A couple wires from your jumper kit, the LED itself, and two resistors, brown, black, red, and red, red, red. Make sure your DMM probes are connected to read voltage. And also, this is where you take your connections for 15 volts and ground. You'll be using the analog ground or A ground in this case. Now let's go ahead and take our voltmeter measurements with MIDAC. So the MIDAC, MIDAC device is over here, plus 15 volts is connected to this side of the 1K resistor, and the ground is connected to the bottom end of the circuit. This is the 1K resistor right here. It has brown, black, red for its color code. 2.2K has red, red, red for its color code. Now these five holes are all connected together. So that establishes a connection for one end of the LED and two resistors. The bottom five are also connected together. And that establishes the connection to ground and to the LED and the bottom end of the 2.2K resistor. I'm beginning by measuring V source. That would be the probe position. When you first plug in the MIDAC, this uh, indicator illuminates. You can then open that up and select the Elvis or the NI Elvis MX instrument launcher. We need the DMM or digital multimeter up here. When you first open this, it defaults to DC volts. And we want to specify a lower range. That is 20 volts will be the maximum that it reads. When you click run, the measurement is taken here. We see it's just under 15 volts or 14.55 approximately. Next, here's the probe positions for V1, plus and minus as I'm showing here. V1 is indicated as 12.78 or 12.79 volts. Here's the probe positions for V2 measurement. Again, red is positive, black is negative. I'm seeing 1.76 volts across the resistor diode combination. Now change your probes to measure current. You also need to break the existing connection between the LED and the rest of the circuit 
and then your two probes establish the wire connection between the two. Current flows through the red probe into the meter, back out the black probe, and then down to the re rest of the circuit. So again, you need to make sure current flows through the meter. I'll pick 20 milliamps for my upper limit, and I'm measuring uh, just over 12 milliamps for the LED current.